Yeah, we can tire. Can you unmute yourself? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Kunam Bay. Assalamu alaikum, Imam. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Can you see us? Can you see us? Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. Jazakallah for, uh, for accepting our invitation. And you've always been supportive with your messages on um, WhatsApp. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed. Like, you know, I've met someone like you. And it is through Amani, Alhamdulillah, uh, we've met. Yes, no, no. Jazakallah, thank you so much for inviting us and keeping in touch with us. And we're so happy that Amani has been an inspiration to your community. Definitely, definitely. In Umrah, I remember. When I went recently, as I told you, that the first one was just like Amani because she's been just been an inspiration for us. And uh, you know, that's so sweet. Thank yeah. you so much. After all this time, that you, she's still at the yeah. front of your mind. It's yeah. really amazing, Jazakallah. Yeah, because she was meant to be on the show, but you know, we had we have the father, Alhamdulillah. You know, she's been, yeah. You know, one of the signs of acceptance is when you leave this dunya, people talk good about you. And you know, yeah. she's like everything we hear about her and the comments I read about her, Alhamdulillah, she's been an inspiration to many, many. May Allah, like, you know, give us ability to reach that status. Thank so, you, Imam. Yeah, Thank so, you, you so know, much. Just Alhamdulillah, the question for you and the sister is like, you know, I have few families, or Allah protect if any family would to go through a similar thing, if they have their daughter. So there is a family that are listening that their daughter is going through similar mm. situation. What would be your advice? Like, how did you go through, and uh, what would you have done something or better? Or, you know, you did your best, Alhamdulillah. Um, I, suppose, I suppose for us, it's, it's two sets of challenges. Obviously, it was when Armani was ill, mm. how we got through that, and then obviously now in our grief as well. Mm. Um, but I think with both of them, it's literally connecting with other people mm. um, that are going through similar mm. and um, being a support for each other. Mm. That really helps. Um, and obviously our faith is a, is a huge support for everything, all the ups and downs in our lives. Um, so that's really helped. Um, you know? yeah, I mean, I think the, the important thing is obviously you have the medical side, which deals with the physical ailments and you have the spiritual side for us as Muslims, which are mm. equally important. Mm. Um, you can't have, you know, you need both working together. Mm. So you know, I think it's important while you're having the physical treatment still to uh, have trust in Allah mm. and know that whatever the outcome is, is best for you or best for your child or best for your family. We may not like the outcome, mm. but, you know, our, our life here is short. We'll see the, you know, the benefits in the next life. And that's how I think Yasmin and I have uh, tried to, you know, help us come to terms with things mm. is that you know life is very short and uh inshallah maybe with you know Allah's permission she Amani may be able to intercede for us and Definitely. you know wait for us at the gates of Jannah because of all the good deeds she's done mm. you know I was there's this hadith uh, where the Prophet says that you know when we enter Jannah so the parents and the children enter Jannah and if the children are on the highest stage of Jannah mm. through the blessing Allah will increase the stage status of the parents to reach the highest status of Jannah so, you know, we pray yeah. that, inshallah, we see each other in Jannah again and be on the yeah. that status. So, yeah, and I think that, you know, I feel that uh, Amani's been honoured. I mean, obviously, you know, through Amani's work, we've met, we've had the privilege of meeting yourself and parts of your community. Exactly. We had the privilege of, you know, meeting uh, Imam Al Suleiman, mm. Sheikh Bilal Asad, Mufti Meng, mm. all of these, uh, you know, these uh, Imams and Sheikhs know about Amani's story. Mm. And in fact, uh, you know, when Amani passed away, the next time Imam Muslim came to the UK, he made a special trip mm. to pray for Amani with Sheikh Bilal Asad at her grave. Mm. And, you know, that was an immense privilege for us, mm. you know, that, you know, uh, Imams like this and Imams like yourself mm. continue to remember Amani and make dua for her. Mm. I think it's time for you to start giving lectures as well, inshallah, Brother Pillar. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so, for Sister Yasmin, maybe you know the mother who's listening. What would your advice be to her? Because they are going this, through the same problem. I mean, obviously, it's, it's the hardest test. I think any parent, um, poss possibly, you know, hard, harder for for a mother, arguably, because mm. um, we've obviously had the connection with our child the longest out of everybody in the whole world, mm. um, and they, you know, literally, your child feels like part of your soul, mm. part of your, you know, every being, mm. um, and you have a special connection with every child and you can't, you know, it's just, 
even even if you have other children we are blessed you know we have two wonderful amazing um other, other two daughters but it doesn't you know no, nothing can replace the, the one child that you've lost mm. um so it's definitely it's the hardest test that you know i've ever ever gone through and I, you know and I'm, i know that potentially there's, there's going to be a lot more tests ahead of us and this isn't going to be the, the only one mm. but i think for it's you know you just i think for me what i've learned through it all is that you just have to you know, when you lose a child your, your world no longer makes sense mm. you know still now we're three um in our third year of grief now and it just literally the world does not just does not make sense so for me i've just had to the only thing that does make sense is allah and he's the only certain thing mm. in the whole world mm. so you know for me i've just had to turn to allah as much as possible and strive for jannah as much as possible because you know inshallah my, i have a part of me waiting for me in jannah and i you know have to do everything i can to get there and i think that's the only thing that will get anybody through a test like this is you just have to turn to Allah um, and just the more we know about Allah and the more we can, you know, we'll never understand mm. this this test that we've been, that Allah has chosen for us. Mm. Um, but by knowing Allah, then we can, we, we can understand that there's mercy in it, there's good in it. Because mm. um, I think in the early stages of my grief, you know, it just felt so well, it still feels so terrible, but it felt more, more terrible because I just, I felt like so distant from Allah because I was like, how, you know, it just felt so painful and so difficult that I was like thinking, well, how, how can this be out of love? How can this be, you know, you just, you just feel so distant. Um, and that's a very scary place to be in. Um, and it's a journey. It takes time to, you know, obviously we never turned away from our faith. Mm. But I think it's um, definitely strengthened our faith um, and knowing Allah and knowing his names and attributes more. And um, that's really been a major um, anchor mm. in, in our grief, I think. It doesn't take the pain away. Um, mm. I think, you know, that that's what's going to get us through everything. And when we were going through the trials, of, you know, when Mani was, was here, you know, I think in some ways it was a blessing that mm. we saw every moment you know that we were gifted with with Amani still in our lives that was a blessing mm. and you know even though it was so difficult there's such cherished moments mm. to live in that state um which i do struggle to live in that state now even though i know i've got loads of blessings around me but to live in that state where you're just literally thankful for every moment that you're spending with somebody mm. is just such such sweet you know it's just on a different level mm. um but yeah, I think for me, I don't know whether. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, it's, it's our faith is the only thing that's going to get us through yeah. such a such a difficult test. You know, I was reading somewhere that uh, when a husband loses a wife, he's known as a widower. If a wife loses mm. a husband, she's known as a widow. When the children lose uh, their parents, they're known as orphan. But there's not a word in any language where parents lose their child because that's something unthinkable. And you know, where are you are in? Like I've had things like this where parents have lost their children it's what makes me remind what reminds me is the prophet sallallahu had seven children and six of them he had to bury them with his own hands on separate occasions so you could imagine the grief he went through so you know inshallah if you have patience and you know you stick together inshallah you will be raised with him and inshallah you know mm -hmm. allah will bless us the highest place but for brother mm -hmm. Khuram, inshallah you know what um, so after that you know, after her death now, you know, what are you working on with the projects which Amani has left behind? So, you know, our audience would know about the projects which... Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, this is the amazing thing that even after Amani's passing, the mm. immense amount of charity work still going on in her name. Mm. Um, I think last year, um, a Jamia Masjid was built in Uganda for the community there. Uh, it serves 500 people. It's got water well and it's a community centre. Mm. And this year, inshallah, this September, uh, a school is being built in Amani's name in Malawi. It will serve six community villages mm. uh, with teachers' accommodation and uh, a health centre will be built there. So we're hoping that will be built uh, this year. This should be finished this year and the school open. Mm. Uh, I think this Ramadan Yasmin is running a little orphan project in Amani's name. Mm -hmm. And of course, on top of that, you know, we don't forget the amount of du'as that people make at Umrah like yourself and other people that they all count in good deeds and um uh, you know people haven't forgotten her and i think for us as parents i think our, the most scariest thing for parents is on top of losing the children is that um uh, that your child is forgotten 
Mm -hmm. uh, for us as parents, Imani is the first thing, and any parent is the first thing she think we think about when we wake up, mm -hmm. the last thing we think about when we sleep, and many times in between. And uh, I think for us parent, parents, the biggest fear is that people move on with their lives and forget mm -hmm. uh, forget our loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think as well because we, you know we're blessed that we've got the platform that we have. I mean, it just mm -hmm. we never intended when we started the uh, Fight for Amani Instagram page for it to grow to to what it became and for people to know Amani in the way that they did. Um, and I just really um, feel blessed that that we've 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 got that. But there's so many families that are are alone in their grief. Mm -hmm. um, I think people don't know how, what to say to them. That people mm -hmm. don't, they don't want to mention the the, the the child's name or you know especially if it's a miscarriage or uh, stillborn you know people just they, they a lot of families just don't hear people mentioning their children mm. so we are you know we recognize the the the, the blessing you know best position that we're in um so i just would you know just for everybody else out there that do know people that are, have gone through um some sort of grief you know don't just you know it's, it's better to go up to somebody and say look i just really don't know what to say but i i'm here for you and, and i can't imagine you know what it must be feeling but i'm here for you let me talk you know talk to me about it and you know, because families just don't get the time, get, get that space to express their grief and, and talk about their child. And it's just so important to, mm. to a mum and to, to the family. Um, so just don't be scared to, to ask people mm. about their, their, the child that they've lost. Yeah. And I think when uh, your own child goes through that, you start questioning your faith. So how would you advise like, to deal with that, to overcome that? I mean, that's a difficult one. I think, uh, you know, I had a lot of questions when Amani was diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, the timing I felt I couldn't understand, um, you know, because uh, I couldn't understand why she had to deal with the uh, terminal illness. And at the same time, uh, she was due to get married. I, I struggled with what was the point of introducing the family to our family, knowing uh, that it, it was not going to go ahead because of her illness. It's like two huge things mm -hmm. in one go. Isn't cancer on a terminal cancer diagnosis enough. Mm. So I did struggle with that a lot. And it's very painful for a father. Mm. Uh, Father-daughter relationship is a very special relationship, mm. especially in Islam, as we know, the blessing of daughters. Mm. Um, and uh, it's very difficult for a father who wants to swap places with his mm. child um, and take the suffering from them mm. because it's innate in us to not be able to do that. Mm. And I felt that I felt I like to say, to, you know, sometimes I'd say to Allah, you know, you've given me a very good life, mm. a blessed life. Mm. I feel I've had a good life. Take my life and uh, cure Amani. Mm. So you want to bargain with Allah. Mm. And of course, if the Prophet couldn't bargain with Allah for his children, who are we to bargain? Mm. And uh, I couldn't see the bigger picture. Um, but, I, you know, I, I feel uh, we still miss her greatly, but I feel that. Allah has honoured her in this life and in the next. Definitely. And I, I think, I, you know, it helps me cope a bit better for that. Mm. It's kind of concerning. I, I, think for me, I, think you, I think for me, I didn't question so much when Mani was ill. Mm. I think I got so much comfort from Amani just still being around and I was just in sort of Amani world. And um, yeah, but I think I've struggled more with that um, in her passing. Mm. Um, and I think sometimes you do have to, obviously there's, certain questions we, we should stay away from and, and you know, but I do think we, we need to discuss things and question. And I think it is hard for the people around you when you are questioning because they yeah. start panicking, oh my gosh, is she losing her faith or something? But uh, I think it is part of the process that we do because we're just trying to figure it out. I mean, I was trying to figure it out, but at the end of the day, I was like saying, I'm pretty sure I'm going to come to the conclusion yeah. that Allah knows best. Yeah. But I had to sort of go through some sort of mm. questioning in myself as well. Yeah. Um, because you just life just does it just I mean it's just so difficult to explain but it just the way that life no longer makes sense mm. is just another layer on top of losing your child is just literally nothing makes sense anymore mm. um, and I'm pretty sure that maybe life will never make sense anymore. Um, and I think, I think for, and also I think for us that to know that it's not something unique just to our mm. family it's not an issue of strength of faith is a journey mm. um i mean it's you know when sheikh bilal asad came to see us he'd lost his son and mm. brother in an accident mm. i think just a year before so it's a well-known story in our community mm. you know and when we sat with him he said look i struggled for mm. two years mm. and i was thinking but you're an imam you're a scholar uh you struggled and that actually in its 
in its own painful way gave us some comfort thinking oh mm. so it's okay to struggle through this time mm. it will get a little bit easier as time goes along mm. uh, your coping strategy your your mechanism and uh, but it's okay to have these questions because we're not we're not you Angels. know we're not prophets mm. we're not getting revelation mm. to soothe us mm. you know uh, you know, we don't, you know, we would never have the same certainty the Prophet Sallam had because mm. he was communicating with the angels, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. directly. We will never have that true sakina. So it's okay for us humans to, to for our mind to go up and down. And I think once you accept that, mm. then it makes it easier to build yourself up again. I think it's quite important if they, for the community to, you know, like the people outside looking in on people with, that are grieving, that the emotion is 100% separate to your faith. You know, you could have the strongest faith ever, mm -hmm. but still be crying your eyes out and, you know, struggling some days to, to even get up um, because you've lost a child. Mm -hmm. You know, and that doesn't mean you're, you're low in faith. So I think it's important for people that aren't, you know, aren't in, in this space of grieving that to, to understand mm -hmm. that it's not a, a lack of iman. You know, we, we will never get over the loss of our child. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we hope, inshallah, that our iman will always be connected to Allah. Mm -hmm. So just uh, yeah, let me just add that inshallah we'll let uh, brother Khurram go. I can see he's getting hungry, but uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know you know when you said that that do the imams even go through that? I just remember the hadith that you know the Prophet ﷺ was holding his daughter's son in his hand, and he was breathing his last, and he started crying. So the Sahaba asked, "And you, O Prophet, you cry?" He says, "Yes, this is a mercy from Allah." So you know. You are, um, mashallah, you are such a good example for the whole ummah, and may Allah keep you strong, and accept all your efforts, and make it a make make it a means of amani getting the highest status in Jannah. Jazakallah khair, and I invite Definitely. for you that inshallah we have jalsa on the twentieth July. If you wanna come down to Port Talbot, you are mostly welcome. Inshallah, if we were there, we'd um, if we can get down there, we'll certainly love to mm -hmm. join. And, and if we ever do make our way to Wales again, we used to spend a bit of time there many years ago for holidays. Yeah. Uh, I, and uh, if we ever do travel to Wales, inshallah, I'll definitely get in touch with you and, uh, you know, reach and, out. And um, the, the madrasa or the school you've made in Malawi, I come from Zambia, which is just next to Malawi, okay. 30 minutes drive. Okay. Oh. So we can go to my house and then we can visit the school as well, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, it sounds an amazing <laughs> invitation. Jazakallah. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. May Allah bless you. Thank you so much.